Hello everyone. Today we are going to test your mind and intuition in understanding the world. I have prepared three physics questions that don't require any advanced knowledge. If you answer them correctly, you've got the mind of a physicist. And don't worry, I couldn't answer all of them at the first either, so this video is not meant to brag or anything. Later in a video I will share the correct answers and also my thoughts and together with my incorrect answers. And remember, guessing doesn't count, so you need a valid explanations for your answers. So without further ado, let's start. You have two perfect balls that are made of the same material. They are not hollow, so the material they are made of is evenly distributed throughout the whole volume. The density of the material is greater than the density of the air. You place the balls at certain altitude about the ground of planet Earth. Let's say 10 kilometers or 33,000 feet and you release them with zero initial velocity. Which one of them fall on the ground first? There are obviously three options. Small ball first, big ball first, the same time. So feel free to pause the video and think. Now if you have your answer, let's move to another one. You have a finite pool and a ship. The ship carries some stuff on top of it. Something happens and all of the stuff fall down on the bottom of the pool. What happens to the water level of the pool? Will it rise, remain the same or will it fall? Again, take your time to think and if you have the answer, let's move to a final question. You want to park a car on the top of a truck during a ride. What will happen? Will the velocity of the car add to the velocity of the truck and the car will crash into the truck? The car will retain its original velocity relative to the ground and the parking will be smooth. Or the car gets small push on the first contact with the truck but otherwise the parking will be smooth. So again, pause the video, take your time to think and we move to the answers. So the answer to the first question, the big ball will fall down first. So the second answer is correct. If your answer is different, then try to pause the video and think again. Maybe now, if you know the answer, you can find the correct explanation, which is also very respectable. My first answer to this question was the number three, the same time. And my thinking was basically very simple. The gravitational acceleration is the same for both objects, right? And since they are the same shape, the air drag somehow compensates everything. So basically very lazy thinking. Then I went to check the answers and it was the big ball first. So I gave it a second big thought and I figured it out. It should be the smaller ball first. They must have it wrong. Because the gravitational attraction does not depend on the mass. So it is the same for both balls, but the air resistance depends on the size of the ball. And the smaller ball has less air resistance than bigger ball, because smaller surface area perpendicular to the wind. And because of this smaller air resistance, and the same acceleration, the smaller ball should be faster. How stupid I was comparing acceleration with the force. You should not compare apples with the pears. And therefore you have to compare acceleration with acceleration and force with the force, but not acceleration with the force. But if you decide comparing forces, you will find out that they are not the same. They depend on the mass of the ball. And the mass of the ball depends on the density and the volume. And the volume depends on the third power of the ball radius. And that is a very steep curve. If you increase the radius of the ball twice, the gravitational force increases by eight times. 
but the force caused by air resistance depends only on the surface area perpendicular to the wind and the velocity of the ball. And this area rises with just second power of the radius. So if you have two balls where one has twice the radius of the first one, the gravitational force is eight times bigger, but the air resistance only four times bigger. And therefore, the heavier ball can reach higher maximal velocity before the air resistance compensates the gravitational force. Even though I had my answer, I kinda know it must be wrong. Because my intuition was telling me that smaller particles are lifted more easily in the wind than bigger particles, even though they are made from the same material. And this is the reason why sand from Sahara can travel all the way to Europe, but we don't get the whole rock from there. So if you answered correctly to this question and your explanation is correct, then you did much better than me. The correct answer to the second question is C. The water level will fall. And now I can brag a little because this is the only question I answered correctly at the first because at that time my understanding of Archimedes' principle was already pretty good. It states that the body immersed in a fluid experiences an upthrust equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. And of course, the amount of fluid displaced is the same as the volume of the immersed body. So the upthrust does not depend on the material density of the immersed body, but only on the volume of the body and the density of the fluid. And therefore, an object floating on the water experiences an equilibrium of the upthrust caused by the immersed part of the body and the total weight of the body, but if the density of the body is higher than the water, the forces will not compensate and it will fall to the bottom. And by this we know that the density of the parts fold from the ship must be higher than the water. So if your answer is incorrect, try giving it another chance now. So the first level of thinking would be that there is just more stuff in the water than it was before, and therefore the water level should rise. Which is clearly wrong because you didn't assume additional gravitational push of the parts on the ship, which also displaces water. And therefore, if the pieces are gone, it creates the opposite effect. So the second level of thinking would be like, these effects somehow compensate, leaving the water level the same, which is again lazy thinking because as we already demonstrated, the density of the parts is higher than the water. So when they are in the water, the amount of water they displace is the same as the volume of the parts themselves. But if they are on the ship, they push it down by the force proportional to the mass of the parts, which is higher than the mass of the water displaced by the parts themselves. And therefore the ship displaces more water with the parts aboard than when the parts are immersed. You can clearly see this when you send the density of the parts to infinity that this volume is clearly lower than this one. And now it's time for the final answer, but before we do, if you enjoyed the video so far, I want to kindly ask you to press the like button and subscribe if you are new to the channel, as it helps the algorithm to spread the video more and it also motivates me to create more. Thank you. The answer to the final question is C. So the car gets a small push when the wheels hit the track. And this seems to be the most intuitive one, even though it is really hard to find the correct explanation. The first level of thinking would be that the car velocity relative to the ground becomes velocity relative to the truck and it crashes into it, but clearly this must be wrong due to the conservation of momentum. 
There is simply not enough energy to accelerate the car to that speed relative to the ground. And this was also my thinking and therefore I assume the correct answer is B, which is wrong. The problem with this question is that linear momentum is not the only type of momentum car has. It has also angular momentum that is carried by the wheels. And when the car hit the track, the wheels stop. But we can't just lose angular momentum. It has to go somewhere. And it is transferred to linear momentum. So the car will get not one, but two pushes. First, when the front wheels hit the track. And the second, when the back wheels hit the track. So if your car has a heavy big wheels, they can carry a lot of angular momentum and therefore such a maneuver is harder to do because the push you get is bigger. So this is it for this video. Thanks for watching and please comment how you did in this test because I'm really interested how smart my audience really is. Thank you. And if you are interested in physics more, I strongly recommend you to watch this video as it will teach you how actually physicists detect new particles. Because you hear it all the time that physicists at LHC discovered new particle, but what does it actually mean when they say it? And the answer to that might surprise you. So, I see you there.